So those would be the nine shots that if your golf swing is what I would term to be just neutral, would be able to play. The reason why it's important to be able to play those shots is because you want to try to keep your swing neutral if you can. And neutral to me means that you can hit all the shots, but that also that your, your slices don't become too big or your hooks become too big. The other reason why th this nine shots is important is because it helps you to diagnose your game. When I look at a student, I look and I think, okay, he hits the ball too low or too high, or he, he can curve the ball to the left, but he can't curve it to the right. Uh, maybe he can curve it to the right, but he can't curve it to the left. But when you analyze someone's game based on their ball flight, it tells you all about their golf swing. The most important part of any golf lesson is the diagnosis part. What their golf ball is doing and what they can or can't do. And the basis for your diagnosis are these nine shots. So, so I look at a student, I analyze their golf ball. First thing I always look at, what is their ball doing? It's, it's, as, if, it's as if they swing and I don't even see the swing. I just look and I see the ball. Then once I see the ball, I go and I replay their swing in my mind. And then I think about what happened at impact to cause that particular ball flight. In order to hit a certain golf shot, you have to have certain impact characteristics to cause that golf shot. So the order that I, that I analyze things are, what did the ball do? What happened at impact to cause that golf ball to do what it did? And then what was happening with their golf swing to cause that particular impact? And it didn't matter whether I was teaching a relative beginner or teaching the best player in the world. So sometimes you'll have a student that comes and they're hitting the ball very good. And then I would, would have them try to hit different shots, some of those nine shots, to find the hole in their, in their game, to find the hole in their swing. Are they better at hitting it high or are they better at hitting it low? Um, can they curve it easier from right to left than they can from left to right? And then that would tell me a direction to head with my lesson. The first thing you have to do with the beginner is get them to hit the ball. And then, then after you make it go somewhere, control the direction. And then the last thing you learn is to be able to control the trajectory. One of the most common mistakes that I see that teachers make is they tell students things that don't really have to do with fixing their particular golf ball mistake. The, the thoughts that I give my students will always have an impact on what their current ball flight is. So, so what I'm trying to do when I'm teaching is I'm, I am changing their impact in order to change their ball flight. So here are the things that I look at when I'm analyzing impact. Okay, the first thing is I want to analyze how much ground they're hitting. Are they hitting too much ground? Is their club coming down too much and hitting too much ground? Is it hitting not enough ground or is it hitting just the right amount of ground? That's the first thing I look for. The second thing that I look for would probably be the loft that they have on the club at impact. Is the shot the correct trajectory for their club head speed? If they're hitting the ball too low, then they're de-lofting the club too much. If they're hitting the ball too high, then they're adding too much loft to the club. Obviously, the speed of their swing will influence how high they hit the ball because of the spin. That More speed, more spin, ball flies higher. So when I look at each person's ball flight, I'm looking at it based on the club they're hitting and the speed of their swing. So the next thing that I would look at is how is the club face at impact? If the club face is square, your ball will fly straight. If your club face is closed, your ball will hook. If your club face is open, all relative to the path you're swinging, then the ball will slice. The next thing that I'll look for will be the path of their swing. Is their club swinging straight through when they hit the golf ball? Is it swinging too much to the right? Or is it swinging too much to the left? One of the most misdiagnosed 
things in teaching golf is when a golf ball goes either to the left or to the right and it could be one of a couple things that caused it to go there. If, if every golf instructor would diagnose what happened at impact correctly to determine a certain shot, they would all be on the right track to helping them teach better. So the direction that the golf ball starts off, either to the right or to the left, can be either from the path of your swing or it can be from the club face. If the path of the swing is off, you will see a divot on the ground that, that goes in the wrong direction, either to the left or to the right. A lot of times golfers hit shots to the right and it's caused because the club face is simply too open. When your club face is too open, you contact too much on the inside part of the ball and it will actually push the ball to the right. So I could hit the ball to the right because I swang over there, or I could hit the ball to the right because my club face is open. I could hit the ball to the left because I swung in that direction or because my club face is closed and I hit the outside part of the ball. That is the part of the diagnosis that you really have to take your time with and you have to make sure you get correct. The last thing that I look for at impact is where is the bottom of their golf swing. Ideally you would like to contact the ball and then the turf. If you, if you are not hitting the ball on the turf, you're either hitting too far behind the ball or you're hitting too far in front of the ball. So those are, those are the impact factors that I look for. How much ground you're hitting, 